there was a part missing in my kit. Well, it's the belt off this X-axis setup. And what did I do about it? Well, I jumped straight into a live chat with Simon from Prusa, explained what had happened and all about the missing part. And before the end of the day, that part had left the Czech Republic and was on its way to Australia. Now that's service. Look what came in the mail. It only took three days. So that's fantastic. That's fantastic service. Now I can finish my X-axis and X-carriage assembly. Because it was a missing part. Next carriage bill. That did not take long at all. So again, today is going to be a hive of activity. I was super excited to resume the assembly of my original Prusa Mark 4S 3D printer. And once I had the belt attached, X-axis and carriage assembly complete. It was time to move on to bigger things. As I continued to closely follow Nifty's Tech Corner YouTube videos on the assembly of the Prusa Muck 4S. However, with today's build, I would also be visiting the Prusa website as well. But more on that later. Now I have to say building the original Prusa Mark 4S kit was a little daunting for me. But at the same time I was gaining a great insight into how this 3D printer works. I was definitely taking my time so as not to make any mistakes and I was having a lot of fun. Of course when I started connecting wires I made sure to check and recheck. Naturally, I was eager to finish, but I was not in a hurry. I wanted the job done right and to have no complications when I started this little 3D printing beast up for the first time. Was I hoping for too much? Well, considering how much work was involved, probably yes. My Z-axis assembly was coming along nicely and soon it would be time to jump into assembling the Prusa Mark 4S next extruder. Every step was bringing me closer to completion but I found this stage in the assembly to be quite fiddly. And although I still had no idea what any of these parts did, it would soon make complete sense because I had built this kit from the ground up. Well, I have finished my Prusima 4S Nextruder assembly. Fan, everything set up. Now all I have to do is tension the belt and I can go on to the next stage. Now I was building all of the components to the XLCD assembly. Another intricate job I made sure to take plenty of time with so as to avoid any mistakes. After that I would have all the wiring to connect, tuck away and tidy up. Throughout the entire build of this kit I found everything to be clearly marked and easy to find. Except of course for that belt that was missing. But I would still definitely Highly recommend buying this printer as a kit. Just for the fact that even for a newbie like myself, if there were any problems, I now had confidence I could hopefully nut it out and troubleshoot my way to a solution. Well, I must say it felt great to finally be at the tail end 
of this big assembling job. After deciding to start my 3D printing adventure and buying the original Prusa Muck 4S kit, having it delivered and finally being able to crack open the box and be instantly greeted by the unmistakable scent of fresh components and that bold orange and black colour scheme that is Prusa. Well, that big box of parts was now empty and all I needed to do was complete the heat bed, connect the rest of the wiring and install the Wi-Fi. And this is where I needed to jump on over to the Prusa website because clearly I had more updated parts than those that were shown on the Nifty's Tech Corner assembling video. And this is where I had the most trouble with the build because of a part that was so bloody small. Now I'm in the nitty gritty. <laughs> I'm, doing it. I'm look, looking for this on the motherboard or the power board. Oh, that's tiny. After numerous attempts at getting this tiny Wi-Fi cable attached to the board, I finally succeeded. It was time to close everything up and take my original Prusa Muck 4S 3D printer on its maiden voyage. This was an exciting moment. However, my excitement was quickly replaced with despair when I had some minor issues. Once I booted my Prusa Muck 4S, it prompted me to go online and download the latest drivers, which I did, And after that, it was time to calibrate. No need to worry though, because it's all self-automated. The machine runs through a series of tests and when each test is passed, it moves on to the next. So here I was getting green ticks all round until I wasn't. After completing its fan tests successfully and then moving on to the X-axis test, everything was going along just brilliantly until my machine failed its Y-axis test. And this is why I highly recommend assembling this kit yourself. Because I knew there were three bearings beneath the heat bed, two of which I had installed off-center but was warned that if the bearings touched the heat bed frame, it could certainly put the calibration out. So after making the necessary adjustments, it was time to retest. And I'm happy to say after that, my machine passed and I could move on to testing the heat bed, extruder nozzle and adjusting the gearbox. Once all that was complete, I was excited because it was time to print. So I simply picked one of the several models that come on the Prusa Muck 4S's Prusa Research USB and with quite a bit of pride and a sense of accomplishment, I watched in delight as my very own original Prusa Muck 4S 3D printer that I had assembled myself print an original Prusa keychain tag. Now whilst this entire process of assembling my 3D printer was going on, I was busy chatting to anyone with a 3D printer and picking their brains for information. I found there's a great 3D community out there willing to share ideas and personal experiences that would help me greatly. I also did something that I've never done before. I read the Prusa manual. Well, this is so amazing to watch. Very rewarding, especially after putting this entire thing together. What an experience. After this little test print, I had already set my sights on my big Mad Max Interceptor project I had in my head before I even bought this printer. And then I'm going to go on the Mad Max Interceptor, which I downloaded last night, incidentally. That's just printing the text now. Wow. Woohoo! I also quickly learned that I would need Prusa's Prusa Slicer software to convert my downloaded STL files to a G-code that the printer would print from. 
And it was here in the brilliant and free Prusa Slicer that I would learn to resize, cut and add supports to the printable model. And the first thing I printed in a whopping 1-6 scale was the gasoline tank. Or as we like to call them here in Australia, the jerry can. Well, there it is. The gasoline tank. Now I've scaled it up, so hopefully it's at the right scale. So let's find out. It's doing something. Starting. This is the gasoline tank. And I went into advanced settings in Prusa Slicer. Now being the newbie that I am, I didn't realize that my Prusa Mark 4S only came with a minimum amount of test filament, which is why my first print was two different colors. But in the end, it was a good experience because I now knew what to do when I run out of filament. Well, I am well and truly on my 3D printing journey now. And as you can see, I've been busy um, and I've learned a lot. So the first thing I printed, oh, my little puppy here, come up here. Come up here, Lily. Come up here and say hello to everyone. Lily's been helping me with the uh, with the printing, haven't you, hey? So the first thing I printed was um, what Prusa had on the USB drive. There were a few uh, things that you could print out. So I printed out this little keychain thingy. Then I went straight into the Mad Max uh, prints. Um, because I wanted to print the uh, Mad Max 2 Road Warrior car, like I said from the very beginning. And the first thing I printed was the jerry can. Now for some reason, that's all I had in my head, I wanted to print the jerry can, just to see how it all worked out and what it looked like. Um, turned out terrific. Now that's one six scale, one six scale and it's going to be huge however after that and that that was printed in advanced settings and i tried another print where the settings were uh not quite as good because this actually took eight and a half hours to print this was printed in half that time and it's, uh, you can see that it's not quite as sharp, not quite as sharp. Then I thought I'd print the front of the Mad Max interceptor car out. And what I found was that the front wouldn't fit on the bed of the 3D printer. Loaded uh, Prusa Slicer. And I worked out how to cut the model up. So I would print half on the bed and then the other half after that was done. However, I started to think, well, do I really need to print it in that such a large scale? Perhaps I could print it at a 1 8 scale and, uh, and maybe it would fit on the bed, which it did, and it would be a lot faster. I'd be cutting down my print time. So, there's the front of the interceptor. I reckon that's the size to, to go with and that's the size I'm going to go with. So that gives you an idea. There are the two jerry cans, the size difference between 1 6 scale and 1 8 scale. But still a good size. And I'm really looking forward to continuing with this print. Um, I don't care how long it takes. I'll just continually do the prints um, the best I can and in the next video I'll have these little babies all painted to give you an idea of the look I'm going with, the realistic look and so that, that will be the fun part for me, painting all the different parts. One 
thing I did notice was there's you just can't get away from the print lines you cannot get out of that so I'm going to use a little trick that I used when I was building model ships and that's using wood putty uh, almost like car bog and I'll just put a light coating of wood putty give it a light sand and that should be all smooth looking good so that's where we're at so in the next video I'll have some painted parts I'm artist Wayne Dowson and thanks for watching everyone <laughs>